So for starters, I'd like to make it known that I never had to sign an NDA. <laughs> that said, for nine glorious years, I was part of a company whose motto is, we are ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. It was everywhere within an eye shot at work. It was on our credo cards, which was a required part of our uniform, on the employee entrance doors, in the locker rooms, and talked about at our da daily lineups with our teams. When I got hired at the Ritz-Carlton at the age of 24, I was elated. I attended college at UNLV, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and I was finally ready to put that hospitality administration degree to work three years after graduation. I was working at a fine dining Italian restaurant, and that chapter was coming to an end. There was a lot of buzz in the local community that the Ritz was being built on the outskirts of Vegas, and it was quickly becoming known as the oasis in the desert. People were quite skeptical about a luxury brand coming to Sin, Sin City and it being located 25 miles from the Strip, but construction continued, golf courses popped up, and a long entryway of palm trees were planted for a grand entrance. The property was designed after Ponte Vecchio in Venice, Italy, and the details were exact. The pre-opening team had already started working there, and I knew a guy, so I gave him my very short resume in hopes that I would get an interview. Even though I had no idea what position I was applying for, if I could get any in at this hotel, I would take it. A couple of weeks passed and I got a call from the director of food and beverage, Mr. Diamond. My Jersey cynicism told me, come on, this has got to be a joke. This Ritz's guy's last name is Diamond? But I went along with it. We chatted for a while, talking about the hospitality experience I already had, my internship at Disney World, and what I saw for myself for the future. It was a lovely chat, and he made me feel like I was already part of the team. There was absolutely a corporate formality about it, but I could hear the warmth in his tone, and it made me feel welcomed, like he made time for me, time to get to know me. And that was all part of the Ritz-Carlton mystique. It was this feeling that was intangible, and it was so very special. Shortly after, he invited me to come to the hotel for an in-person interview. Honestly, I was stunned. I never thought I would make it past the first round. So I immediately went out and bought my first ever interview suit and prepared to meet Mr. Diamond. I arrived early for my scheduled interview at the hotel and it was still under construction. I met him in the lobby and I was handed a white hard hat with a lion and crown logo on it. It was like slow motion when he was handing it to me. I felt like I was one of the chosen ones. He, took, he looked me in the eye and he said, go ahead, put it on. I stood proud, took a deep breath, and knew I was going to nail this interview. He took me through the nearly finished hotel and my eyes were bouncing from marble floors to crystal chandeliers to wood trim to handcrafted furniture. As we walked through the lobby, the clicking of my heels against the marble floor echoed and ticked like a metronome. I was getting an insider look at the hotel before it was open and was completely engrossed. Every area had something more beautiful and lavish than the last. The colors were pale peaches, greens, and yellows, and there was something so elegant and so calming about it, like you knew you wanted to be there. That's that mystique. He toured me all around to each food and beverage outlet to include the pool and beach bar, in-room dining, the formal dining room, and the banquet area. As we walked into the grand ballroom, the carpet wasn't even fully installed yet. It had that new hotel smell, and I was drinking all the Kool-Aid he was pouring. We discussed several potential roles that would be the best fit, especially since this would be my first ever manager position. I was nervous and excited, and I knew I'd be trading in my graduation cap for a shiny new Ritz-Carlton name tag. After a bit of back and forth, he recommended, and I agreed, that the pool and beach manager position would be the perfect fit for me. It was a small bar and grill with just a few associates. He also mentioned that all the managers were trained for lateral service. This was code for we were voluntold to work wherever we were damn well needed. And there were several events that fell into this lateral service category. Corporate events, 
holiday brunch with Santa, late night dinners, and all the weddings. And there were already countless weddings on the books for the coming months. I thought to myself, everyone loves a wedding. Hearts and schmoopies, people in love, fancy, ritzy, over-the-top weddings. What's the worst that could possibly happen? <laughs> so it's roughly six months after I'm working there that I got the call for my first lateral service and my first wedding. It's a particularly beautiful evening for a wedding, and the banquet team was preparing the ceremony in the courtyard, which was surrounded by flowers, beautifully manicured gardens, and several onlookers. My regular shift at the pool bar had just wrapped up, so I'm using the courtyard as a cut through to get to the banquet department to get a sneak peek. The anticipation's building, so I have no idea what to expect. I check in with Frank, our very experienced banquet director, before I could even say anything, he says, hey, Tucci, I hear you already know some of our wedding guests. They've been at your pool bar most of the day, right? Before he even says anything, I knew exactly what he was talking about. I giggled and shrugged. <laughs> yeah? You mean Jill and Amy and their husbands? She was telling anyone who would listen about her outrageous hairdo while sipping on buttery nipple shots all day long. <laughs> well, I guess you know who to keep an eye on then he says, and also smirks and winks at me. I knew he was giving me the riot act, but there was definitely something stewing, and I felt it. In the chills up my arms and deep in my gut, I felt it. As he's heading to the ceremony, he hands me a run of show and a radio, told me to pay close, a ca close attention to our pool bar guests. He said, call security on channel one if anything goes down. I felt as if I just joined the SWAT team and I needed my own handle. Kitty cat to security, kitty cat to security. I was left standing outside the banquet office feeling my feet glued to the floor, watching Frank and his team get smaller and smaller as I walked down our very long internal corridors. Goes down? What the hell is he talking about? I said out loud. This is the Ritz. We're ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. And this is a wedding. As I stood there with my radio in hand, I knew my only choice was to get in position, look alive, take no prisoners. <laughs> the ceremony was lovely and straightforward with no real drama, nothing to report. The reception was where things started to get going. You could feel the excitement rising and the electricity in the air. People are happy and laughing, clinking their glasses, starting to partake in some celebratory shots. The reception had a full open bar package, and this crew was taking full advantage of it. And yes, these were my pool bar guests. I kept a clean view on them to make sure that everyone was behaving. I was smiling and helping along wherever I could, like picking up glasses and hors d'oeuvre plates. We were always told to be like swans, paddling like hell underneath, but smooth as silk on the surface. So I was trying to practice that mantra. So you know that kind of drunk that happens when you take a couple shots and you don't really quite feel anything yet? And then maybe you take a couple more and you still think you're good? <laughs> then about 30 or 40 minutes passes and all of a sudden you're drunk? Yeah, that's what happened to these guests. So I'm sticking with the crowd and following the run of show that Frank had given me, keeping a close visual on my pool bar ladies, Jill and Amy. We seemed friendly enough to each other, but I definitely caught a vibe that something just wasn't right. I got those chills up my arms again, so I knew I had to stay close. The wedding wrapped up and several of the guests were headed to the attached casinos. As they're heading in, they're laughing, pinballing into one another, and snickering under my breath under their breaths, and then I saw it. One of those pinball bumps came across a little too hard from Jill to Amy. And that playful, happy drunk, it turned into something else. Jill was just drunk enough to let her true colors shine through. The ladies were still in their wedding attire and Amy had a beautiful updo with a long, silky ponytail. They got their chips and began their first hand at the table to what I thought and hoped 
would be the closer to the evening. One of them had a different plan. As they're playing their hands, Jill had a strong eye hold on Amy. She isn't smiling anymore. She's barely paying attention to the cards, making the chips dance in her fingers, glaring over her cocktail. Something's not right. I could see Jill's legs crossed and the one on top, it's pulsing up and down with anxiety, getting faster and faster as whatever emotions inside of her are boiling up. I felt it in my jersey gut. Something was about to go down. <laughs> so I followed Frank's instructions. I switched to channel one on my radio and I say, security to kitty cat. No, wait, that's not right. Shit, kitty cat to security. Damn it, I need help. Someone come, please come to the casino. I just know something's about to go down. They replied back, 10 4 2 3. We know who you are. You don't need to use the handle kitty cat. <laughs> We're on the way. And within minutes, they quickly come to support me. Security spots me on the perimeter and stood close to me so I could give them the lowdown. Jill got up from the table and headed to the ladies' room. There was a few moments of pause, which seems like the longest bathroom run ever. She emerged from the ladies' room, and as she's walking back, she picks up her pace, beelining it to the table. She pushes up her sleeves, almost running, and has headed right for Amy's updo. She was on a mission to attack. And before we knew it, Jill grabbed that ponytail, pulled her backwards, and Amy was dragged right off that blackjack stool. Jill's yelling at her uncontrollably. She's screaming, saying that she knew she was having an affair with her husband. <laughs> How could she betray their friendship and marriage? And then it really exploded. Arms flailing, screaming and crying, spilled drinks, knocked over card tables and chairs, and security running from all angles to put a stop to this brawl. They were quickly separated into different corners. Police called, and they were detained by security. They were escorted out of the casino back to the lobby where the police made it clear that any further incidents would result in an arrest. It was a cool 2 a.m., and the bride and groom had to come down from their wedding thunder evening to claim their drunk relatives in the lobby. They were mortified, to put it lightly, full of apologies, and said they would control it for the rest of the night. But it was not controlled. <laughs> <laughs> After the bride and groom escorted Jill, Amy, and their spouses to their respective rooms, they continued to fight disrupt several non-wedding guests, and cause commotion for the entire overnight team. Jill continued to be the instigator and just couldn't calm down. She threw all of her husband's clothes from the window into the flower gardens where the wedding had actually happened. She continued to be disruptive until the police were called again. They could not resolve their issues and both women were arrested and taken to Clark County Jail at 4 a.m. <laughs> Our overnight manager comped in-room dining breakfast packages and Sunday breakfast in the dining room for the floors above and below the affected room and five on each side in the hallway in both directions. So in total, 30 rooms within the vicinity of the eruption all had comped breakfasts. In-room dining was swamped and overwhelmed. The restaurant couldn't handle the comped volume and the bride and groom were again mortified. It took several days for the dust to settle and our Ritz Carlton lion to get its shine back. Frank made sure to check on me in the days after to confirm that I was still on board for future lateral service events. <laughs> <laughs> I just kept telling him, like a swan, right? And then I finally had the chance to smirk and wink back at him. I reflect on this lateral service as an initiation of sorts. Once I had one wedding under my belt, I felt like I could do anything. I wouldn't have traded any of it or changed anything about my experience. I loved every minute of those nine years with the Ritz. Sure, there's harder days than others, but I would always find a way to get through it by whispering to myself, we're ladies and gentlemen, 
Ser <laughs> serving ladies and gentlemen. All right, give it up for Kat Cicerone.